Good afternoon, my name is Tom Shreve. I'm senior locomotive engineer here at Roaring Cap. I've been working on these engines for the last uh, 47 years. My partner here is Phil Reeder. Hi, I'm Phil, Phil Reeder. Uh, I've been associated with Roaring Cap for uh, a long time, not as long as Tom, but I've been here 30 some years. Practically grew up here like many of the uh, young fellows did. Well, what we're here for today we put the builder's plate back on the, the Dixiana. Builder's plates were cast by a foundry and they were put on the engines so that the engines could have a little bit of history behind them. So that if you were, say, ordering a part for a locomotive uh, from the original factory, you had a number to go along with the locomotive so that they had a, a file in the original factory that they could go back to, find what the part was, and re uh, remanufacture it. The Dixie has been without a number plate, a uh, builder's plate, excuse me, for about 60 years as far as I could tell. Um, we have photographs of it in uh, Virginia before it came here, having the plate on it. But by the time it was loaded on the flat car and shipped to Felton, by the time it arrived here, there was no plate. So for the entire time it's worked here at Roaring Camp, it's never had that builder's plate. That's always bothered me, you know, ever since I was a kid. Going back though now, oh, several years ago, I was riding a train with uh, Georgiana Clark, uh, the CEO and, and uh, wife of the, the founder, Norman Clark. And I told her, I says, you know, I'm gonna have plates made for these engines. You know, I says, it's gonna be on my nickel. You know, it's something I wanna do. And she was good with it. Okay, sounds good. And we went on to talk about other things like the Climax Project and things like that. Well, I started doing the research on who could build me a pattern and who could do the foundry work. I actually found several people who could, but circumstances being what they were, unfortunately, they all flaked on me. So it took a number of years. Finally, here, just this year, I found two young fellas out of uh, Santa Maria in the uh, Tascadero area that could actually do the work. And they were excited to do it, honored to do it. The pattern maker was uh, Jeff Tolan, and I'd worked with him in Santa Margarita on the Pacific Coast Road there. And the other one was uh, Ernest Blakely. He has a backyard foundry. So between the two of them, they produced a uh, pattern, and it took about four tries to actually get the plate to cast properly, but the end result is beautiful. Like every project here at Roaring Camp, it's not just me. It's always is, always will be a team effort. No one person can do it all, nor do you want to. So that being said, you know, um, Tom came in on the project, I told him about the plate, and uh, he inscribed on the back. I inscribed on the back a dedication to Mrs. Clark. I inscribed property of Roaring Camp. And I also inscribed stolen from locomotive number one. So that if somebody, if some evil person comes along and takes this plate, there's no way he can sell it. So after that, we got inscribed. We, uh ran the plate down to Roaring Camp. The blacksmith hat down there has a really nice old press. And uh, we took some two by fours and, and a piece of uh, bar stock. And we were able to press, not roll, but press a radius in that plate to fit the diameter of the smoke box. Then we uh, took it, painted it with a high temperature black paint and uh, brought the lettering back out. I left some of the old paint on there just to give it that patina and to say it's not perfect. No plate ever was ever casted perfect for any locomotive ever built. And so today is the day that we decided to uh, literally install it on the locomotive. That started with uh, you know, looking at some old photographs to determine where the original plate was, looking at the original boiler, we can still see the old rivets or studs or whatever it was that was in there. And we kind of determined that's where the plate would live came here, kind of measured it out, set it up there, drilled four holes. 
riveted in place, bolted and riveted in place. Mm -hmm. In that time it took to get these plates made, uh, Mrs. Clark passed away. But I'd promised her this promise, and so I am fulfilling that promise as a promise kept. The Dixiana now has uh, a builder's plate from the original Lima drawings that we have. And um, from this day on forward, people could look at it and say, yeah, it's a Lima locomotive number 2593, built 1912.